right, folks, we're at the Roswell Museum. And when in Roswell, act like the Roswellians. Let's check this place out. All right, so the main reason we came to this museum is for the Robert Goddard workshop. All right, so tell us a little bit about Robert Goddard. Robert Goddard is the father of modern rocketry. Okay, this guy is the reason why we're able to go to space and with, oh, you know, awesome. The old, uh, you know, Gemini, astronauts, and Apollo. This is because of this stuff here. And this is how he did it in a workshop just like yeah. this. This was this is his workshop. They just moved, just it, moved here. it here. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? Yes. This I mean, a, could you imagine trying to used, put all this together? First one that used, like, um, a liquid propellant fueled rocketry. That's wow. Weird. It's so unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that thing. So what was the time frame on uh, on this guy? So I guess this has been uh, 38. So you're right around World War uh, II. Uh, very interesting. This looks like a wood shop. Yeah, this looks like a wood shop. Take a picture of this to show Michelle what you need. What a shop is supposed to look like. This is how much room I need. This is how much room so back in this time period in the 1930s when he's building this stuff, uh, primitive to the day standards, right? Man. But uh, still a lot of the same stuff we use today in like a wood shop. This is a lathe. It's a belt-driven, like, it looks like a steam engine lathe, man. This thing is like wild. It's got, it's got an electric motor on it. Look at this stuff. What five things to adjust everything? Yes. Or no, this one, there's six. There's some here, here. So he's finding pipes and different things to use. This is how you change the speed on it. You put the belt on a larger piece of the pulley and it slows it or speeds it down. I need that actually. I need that. Mine's bad. So he's there building the, uh, the tops of the missiles or the rockets. Pretty cool. Right. Pull it out and bend it. Like you, you do with your feet though. You click it and it bends it in half. I mean, this is truly astonishing that he's able to crank it out uh, this kind of stuff out of a shop like this. Amazing. It is, man. I mean, no one knew anything about the technology. This heave. So this kind of ties us, ties us into the earlier uh, video we did on the Alien Museum. Uh, I believe, and I think you believe too, that they did have help from aliens to get the technology. Because how else? How do you come with this? Would you come with this at this time period? Would have been very amazing. And that's my personal opinion. Uh, we knew. Nothing about technology at that point. This technology and it came from nothing. We had just learned how to make airplanes like 20 years. Before. That's what I mean. 20 years before, we're we're going into World War One with you know cannons and and mules Bi and biplanes, <laughs> and then and 20 doing, years later, we're doing this. We're I mean, yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> it's pretty bizarre. You need to put a parachute on. 38. Yeah, this was taken yeah. in 38. This is this rocket was built. By Goddard and his crew, this this rocket, that one, 
and the following month it flew this rocket was the first rocket to ever do it amazing 3,000 almost a mile in the air I mean out of, I mean out of nothing no I'm trying to remember my history but von Braun was the one that was creating the rockets for Germany at this yeah, time the V2 period rocket, the V2s yeah, yeah. so this is rivaling the same time period this is before him like if, if this it's been a few exists, years before uh, yeah von Braun would not have known how to do it so uh just amazing I mean I mean, it just blows your mind when you think about the fact that uh, you had biplanes 20 years earlier in World War One, and before, right yeah. before the brink of World War Two, this is the technology. It's just, yeah. it's almost unheard of. Then we know how to do a rocket too, right? This, this actual rocket, this one, not, this isn't a replica, it's this one. That's the one that <laughs> did it. It's amazing. That is unbelievable. Like, you can almost touch it, Dad. No, they said if we touch it, we get kicked out, yeah, so yeah, we, ain't, we ain't gonna touch it. No. So this is a fascinating museum. This, this is gonna show you your flight testing at Roswell. This is between 1930 and 1942, Dr. Goddard performed 56 flights testing Roswell. Each test brought Refinements and new designs of the 32 flights produced the best altitude was close to a mile and a half. This is this is from the moon. This went in Apollo 17. The moon. And this came back with us. As the missiles traveled higher and faster, the instrument packages became more and more long. All because of this. So there he's working on a thrust chamber. Amazing designs. So this suit was born to the moon. Apollo 17. Wow. Amazing. We were just talking about, we went to the uh, Houston, uh, is that the Johnson Space Center? Yeah. In Houston. Yeah. And uh, all the cool stuff they have there, too, if you're into the rockets and all. But, uh, this museum's quite uh, impressive. Yeah, actually, yeah. This is so cool. Here it is. We started building the rockets. Yeah, there you go. Historical reconstruction of his workshop. Robert Goddard's workshop. Yeah. Right here they're talking about the German V2. The rockets began to terrorize London. Dr. Goddard was not surprised. His quest for high altitude had led to a similar but smaller rocket in Roswell. At great expense, the German army reinvented much of Dr. Goddard's pioneering work. Rocket turboprop, these are all prototypes. This is talking about his 214 patents. So there he goes, one of the first turbine engine uh, propelled rockets. about solar energy so when you're in space you got to use the sun because that's your power source rockets for airplanes So his first launch was 1926. That's that's so early on. It's amazing. Look, he was making them even in 15, 1915. He was making them. That one he was trying to use gunpowder as a propellant. 
and it exploded. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess you learned real quick. Yeah. <laughs> gunpowder doesn't quite work. 1915 is when he's, I mean. <laughs> Amazing. So there's a picture before it was launched and there's after. A hundred years later. Yeah, that's crazy. A hundred years ago, man. We had just learned how to fly, how to make cars, telephones, and this. Rockets. <laughs> Amazing. I'd rather not die. So you yeah. just... <laughs> So while we're checking out the Rocketeer stuff, we're checking out some of the native stuff as well. We found it. Your hat. This, Walter White. Oh, what is it? This is So nice. that is Walter White's hat up there. And we found his RV at the uh, restaurant, so. We're on a quest to find Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. Yes, because we we do think Walter White escaped. Yes. Why do you wear them at night? Oh. Zero heads and stuff, man. Okay, so I got massive major creep factor going on here. Look at this creepy ass Ooh, stuff right here. Yeah. Right, I can't do the doll thing. Look at the picture they have the babies on their back. Yeah. What do they call it? A boost or something like that? It's kind of cool. It's talking about all the different kind of spurs used back in the day. Examples of barbed wire. A Lakota pipe. All right, we're getting to the fun stuff. All right, so this gun on top here is a uh, Winchester Repeating Arms Model 1873. The one below that is a Winchester Repeating Arms Rifle Model 1876. I'm sorry, 1866. And the one below that is the Winchester Repeating Arms Model 1876, so. Got 73, 66, 76. So the top one would have been uh, using a 40 cal or a 44 cal. Um, the one there in the middle would use a 44 cal. And then the one on the bottom here could use a 45 or a 75. I made two versions of that one. Yeah, so it's just talking about a 75 caliber, and this one is definitely not, a, you can tell it's not a 75 caliber, and uh, I'm gonna look that up, fact check that, because that sounds insane. <laughs> you think about trying to fire a, a 50 cal these days, could you imagine? Dude. Yeah, here's the uh, information here. They made a 45 and a 75 caliber. That's that's crazy. Okay, so we just looked it up, and there you go. That's a that's a large projectile, <laughs> <laughs> like a missile coming out the end of the gun. <laughs> Why is it so big? So if you hit that, how how many could you fit? Like five in the entire uh, man. I think them are like what six inches long or something. Well, here's. They're showing the picture. I think this is a 50 cal. This this one. This I think is a 75 cal right here. Jeez. I mean, it dwarfs the 50 cal. Unbelievable. <laughs> so we did find the outfit that Chewbacca wore for the uh, insurrection <laughs> day. I think that's the whole thing, isn't it, right there? I just want to know where the gold is. Give me the gold. That's a Wells Fargo booty knife. That's pretty cool. Holy cow, look at the barrel on that second one. Oh, man. Yes, yeah, uh, that ain't going to melt down on you. That's a very pretty thing, man. The stock on it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like some kind of Brazilian looking yeah. one or something, you know? Tiger Wood. Yeah. Quite a collection here. 
A lot of people don't know how long uh, Wells Fargo has been around. They don't realize it was once a stagecoach uh, company. So that looks like the sword in that slot machine I played that never wins. And uh, if the sword goes up, you can actually win the jackpot, but it never goes up because it's too heavy. And this is the sword they use in that slot machine, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but they got some uh, conquistador stuff here, so uh, chain mail. I guess this is people that, would, that ruled over this area or something at some point? Like yeah, I think it's just kind of going area. going through all the people that ruled this area. Wow. Look at the gun, look at the difference in the weaponry. I mean, yeah, from, uh, yeah, within a hundred years, basically, yeah. you got you got muskets, uh, black powder muskets and all, and, and, and swords, and one axes and things like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool right there. And then a hundred years later, you got all that. Now, and then a hundred years later, you yeah, got machine take, guns. Yeah, taking the <laughs> taking into consideration, in you know, in 1918, we're fighting wars with biplanes, and 20 years later, we're shooting missiles. So, yeah, it's amazing how quick the technology advances. Well, these guys are using a stick with a sharpened blade, and a hundred years later, we're using like M16s. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing, astonishing. Kind of like a regulator type badge. Oh, wow, that's super cool. And then a hundred years after that, now we have uh, digital warfare. It's not even done. Yes, yeah, digital warfare and biological warfare and everything else. Um, check this out. And then attacks on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Russians attacking oh, Facebook is the way they get to us nowadays. see that man wow talking, so that's tree what is tree grew around that gun that number nine? barrel it's that's Kentucky amazing rifle. Kentucky rifle. Mm -hmm. cyrus jackson maker 42 okay so i know that this is uh 1970s 79 um but i foresee michael keaton playing batman and we're gonna need a batmobile so uh, we'll call it art this out. That is too cool. This is from the 60s, dude. Man, the detail on this is absolutely amazing. Look at this. You even got the gas tank up. Yeah, the meter. The meter. <laughs> look at look at the uh, the the um the electric meter. the electric part the uh the meter electric meter wow so much detail water heater yes outside okay, there's gotta be a pink flamingo right where's the pink flamingo oh yeah it looks see the glass water so this is done in, what year is this done sixty two no, that it was done in '88. Oh, okay. He was born. Oh, okay. Still done in '88. Where's the pink flamingo? It's not very long. 